Awesome. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, steadily rolling in while I get us on Facebook as well. There we go. Right. And we're on Facebook in a second here. <laughs> Loading, preparing. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And anyone who's on Facebook, feel free to join us. I dropped the link to join uh, or to register for the Zoom webinar in the description of this. So if you want to join us and send some messages, um, or answer our polls, you are welcome to join us. Um, if you would prefer, we will be watching the comments on Facebook as well. So if you'd like um, us to respond there, we can do that as well. Um, but we'll just wait a couple of moments while we wait for everyone to join us. I'm gonna share my screen so you can see our presentation slides and then we'll get going. Oh, we have a raised hand. Do you wanna ask your question in the chat? I think it's available to anyone. Otherwise I'll... Um, oh, yeah, and just uh, for anyone entering and wants to send a message into the chat, it's available to everyone. You can change your uh, message to everyone. It's a little toggle menu, a little drop down menu. Um, so you can share your thoughts with everyone, which is nice. I'll go ahead and share. Okay. Or loading. <laughs> there we go. All righty. I'll get us started in a couple of seconds here. We got quite a few of you online with us. Hi. Great. All right. So as people start rolling in, I'm just going to go ahead and get us started. So welcome, everyone. We're going to be talking about uh, citizen science with the Girl Scouts. We're going to talk about the tree promise. Um, and as a part of that, you're going to actually be able to complete the tree promise through IC Change with us online today. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Just to get you give you uh, familiarity, we do these webinars every week on Tuesdays usually. This is a special extension uh, version for uh, the purpose of talking about Girl Scouts, so we could do it during times that Girl Scouts could be here. So um, the same goes for the live events as go for this. You have access to the chat and you have access to a QA. and a um, we would love to hear your thoughts and commentary in the chat. If you have questions about citizen science or SciStarter or the project or Tree Promise, um, IC Change, Tree Promise, the Girl Scouts, um, all of the above, you are more than welcome to send it into the Q&A and we can answer it for everyone. And just to check that you know how to use the chat, we'd love to test that out for you. If you'd like to drop your name and what city you're from or what state you're from, we'd love to hear who we're talking to. And we'll give you a couple of seconds to do that while we talk about, oh, actually we will just wait a second because I don't want you guys to be overwhelmed with things. Um, and team, I apologize. We have a lot of people online today with panelists today, which is awesome. But that also means that my notes or my chat is having trouble being looked at. So, oh, there we go. Okay, just kidding. Now it's working. Awesome. Oh, from a ton of places, Wisconsin, Florida, Alabama, Southwest Indiana, North Carolina. Wow. I'm zooming in from Phoenix, Arizona. Anyone want to chime in about where they are? All right, cool. Okay, we'll keep us moving then. I'm glad to have you all here. All right, before we introduce ourselves, or rather, I guess to introduce myself since I don't have a specific um, slide for this. My name is Emma. I'm usually the host for these live events. So if you ever come to the Tuesday ones, um, you'll probably see me and you'll see the person who just dropped the uh, poll out there. That's uh, Roland. So he's usually there on two or always uh, there on Tuesdays uh, for those events at 2 p.m. Eastern. And if you haven't already realized it, there's almost 50 percent of you have answered. But this question is, have you ever participated in a citizen science project before? So thinking through, if you know what citizen science is, we'll define it for you later too. It's kind of looking for about 80% of you to respond. We're at 74, we're so close. <laughs> Couple more. 77%. The few of us who are not answering must be asleep. <laughs> 
All right. Okay. I guess we'll just end it right there then. Awesome. Okay. It looks like most of you have. That's awesome. I'm kind of curious what projects y'all have been in. If you know the name of the project, go ahead and drop that in the chat too. I'd love to, um, I'd love to hear that as well. Great. Okay. In addition to that, have you ever been to a SciStarter live webinar before? So this means, have you ever been to one of the events on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern time where we talk about any particular projects? We've had two in the past uh, to talk about Girl Scout related projects. So that will be shared with you momentarily. Roland, do you want me to launch it? Yes. Can you launch it? I'm not yeah. able to. Oh, weird. Okay. I'll, I'll change your... Uh, there we go. Launch. Oh. You guys are so fast. <laughs> I see change nine naturalist. Awesome. We've got an old pro product squirrel. Stream mapper. Awesome. Or stream selfie. Other one. Excellent. Oh, that's so exciting. I ah, love Project Squirrel. There was a um, SciStar Live event for Project Squirrel and Squirrel Mapper, and those were so fun. We had two different scientists on here. So if you go back and find out more about that one, it's just amazing to see people so excited about squirrels. <laughs> Excellent. And Frog Watch, nice. Some herpetologists in here. Great. Um, all right. So it looks like the majority of you have not, though. So that'll be a good learning experience for you today. Absolutely. And we've got some more people joining us right now. So if you are just joining us, we're just answering some polls to see who we're talking to to get a good idea of how um, how to best help you. Um, and then we also want to know, are you all Girl Scouts or do we have some people in here who are just curious about uh, IC change? So far it's 100%. Oh, just kidding. A lot of Girl Scouts. Yeah. <laughs> to be expected, right, Kaylee? <laughs> Excellent. 60% of you, 72%. Girl Scout. Awesome. Yes, times three. Awesome. Glad to have so many of you online with us. Cool. Okay. Excellent. We'll go ahead and end that one. Looks like we have a few aspiring citizen scientists and seasoned citizen scientists too, as well as volunteers or troop leaders. We also have a researcher uh, or project leader on here, which is super fun. So Excited to have you all here. And then lastly, I promise this is the last one. I put them all together so that you'd be like ready to work when you first joined on. But we're curious what level you're in. So this might, um, this also coincides with like what level of Girl Scouts you're in potentially. Awesome. Wait a couple seconds. Oh, 84% of you already. Awesome. Wow. It's really evenly split. This is awesome. Okay. So K through two, we got about 28% of you. Three to five or three through five is 34%. That's the majority. Um, six through eighth grade, 28%. And then nine through 12th is 7%. And then for some of you, it's not applicable. Cool. Well, it's awesome to have you all here. And now you can take a break. <laughs> we'll have you uh, interact with it in a little uh, for a little bit more uh, for some more uh, responses to things, but for now you can relax. Um, NA Maya is not applicable. So if you're not a Girl Scout or not in school, for example, so you'd hit not applicable. Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, awesome. Okay, so just to set the stage for what we're talking about today, we're talking about citizen science um, and how the Girl Scouts can get involved in this for patches and other um, events to do. It's essentially a collaboration between scientists and those of us who are curious, concerned, and motivated to make a difference. It's how people can make an impact on issues they care about and help science. So this is volunteering for research projects that are ongoing. And so they're using your, your data and your, uh, your observations to work on actual real projects that are ongoing, uh, which is very exciting to be able to say that your project is now. Um, so the reason we're all here is because we probably connect to the idea of uh, appreciating nature. Millions of people um, enjoy nature, maybe going on uh, hikes, or maybe they just like science because they like science class, and that's all wonderful. And we also have scientists out there who have a million and one uh, projects to do and need a lot of data in order to get anywhere with these projects. And so they can't necessarily find each other without some help. And so that's what citizen science projects are for. And that's what uh, SciStarter is for. So you're at a SciStarter live webinar and SciStarter is the organization that's trying to bridge the gap between the two. So we are a database of projects to help you find all those projects. And we have a special partnership with the Girl Scouts to make sure that you have all the projects available that are very um, catered to you all. 
Um, so if you ever go to SciStar.org, this is what it looks like. It's essentially a gateway to uh, more than 3,000 citizen science projects, and they filter in and out over time based on if the uh, project's ongoing, but you can essentially search anything on there. Um, and the lucky thing is, is there's a tab at the very top that says Girl Scouts. If you can see my cursor, it says at Girl Scouts. So if you go straight there, you can got, get a lot more information specifically for you. Um, and then if you are of an age where you're allowed to have accounts or your family has an account, if you have an account on SciStarter, you have a dashboard that allows you to save projects. It allows you to uh, track the projects you're in already versus the ones that you're just interested in joining in the future. Um, you can actually like hold on to events as well. So you can tag or not tag events, but save events to your profile so you can look back at it later. And uh, you can also see your contributions over time. And so uh, IC Change is one of those projects that's an affiliate, which allows us to actually check how often, allows you to see how often you contribute to these projects. So if you're looking for data about yourself and how often you participate in these things, it's a really awesome way to be able to do that. So if you're interested, you're more than welcome to. And then the last thing I'll say about SciStarter is that if you're looking, if this ends up being like the thing for you, you love it so much and we hope it is, there are other resources available via SciStarter, like trainings. Um, and the foundations of citizen science training is really helpful to understand like the basics of it and understanding how to gain a little bit more confidence in your uh, observation skills and uh, learn a little bit more about what you're uh, participating in. So if you are interested in learning more or this is something that'll help you with your professional development or uh, show off to your teachers and whatnot, you can take this for free. Um, as long as you have an account, you can save a badge that's personal to you. And then you have more trainings you can do after that if you'd like. So um, that's enough about SciStarter. You have a million and one resources and we're happy to answer questions about them. Um, but for now, we're gonna introduce our guests today. So we have three guests um, to say hello to. So first of all, Caroline, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks so much, Emma. Um, hi everyone, I'm Caroline. Um, I work with IC Change. I'm currently in Louisiana, uh, but I did see someone in the chat mention they're from North Carolina, which is where I'm originally from. So um, I love both states and I'm a total Southeast girl. So um, thanks for having me on. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and then can I have both of you uh, say hello? <laughs> Whichever one. I'll go first. Hi, everyone. I'm Zainab Ali, um, and I am a part of the Girl Scout Tree Promise team. So I'm going to give a little bit of background, and then Kaylee, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Kaylee. I'm one of our K-12 program managers at Girl Scouts of the USA. Um, I lead our national STEM and entrepreneurship program, but what I like to say is I have the really awesome job of creating badges for Girl Scouts and everything from coding to climate to community problem solving. And I'll be here to tell you some more about Girl Scout programs today. And now I think I'm handing it back to Zainab to take, start telling us about climate. Absolutely. Thanks. Go for it. Okay, so we'll jump right into it. Um, but I think to set the stage and to give a little bit of background and context of what we're going to talk about, I'm going to go over a few basic concepts that you all might be familiar with or uh, may have heard about in school. Um, so the first thing is, what is climate change? Um, but to talk about climate change, we've got to know the difference between weather and climate. And so just throw in the chat, do you know the difference between weather and climate? Um, Maybe how are they different from each other? Um, and while you guys throw that in there, I'm curious to see who all is familiar. But um, just to briefly go over the difference between weather and climate, weather is something that's happening presently. So something that's happening on a short period. So for example, if it's raining outside or if it's a hot day, and then you've got climate, which happens over a long period of time. So it's the weather, but over a longer period of time, like 20 to 30 years. So that's the difference between weather and climate. Weather is what's happening now and climate is what's happening over a long period of time. And that's how you can describe kind of the weather in an area. And then we can talk about climate change, which might also be a topic that you all are familiar with. Um, so climate change is just the change of those weather patterns um, over in a specific area over a long period of time or over time. So you might have an area that's generally the climate is just warm and sunny. I live in Florida, so that's kind of the climate here. But for climate change, that might change over time. Um, and we can move to the next slide, please. So to talk about the impacts of climate change. So why is climate change important? So climate change has many impacts on our planet. Um, it can 
It includes extreme weather, uh, melting ice, and sea level rise. You may have heard of that. It can, it can cause changes in ecosystems and habitats. It can cause um, health-related issues, such as like heat. So if the climate is changing in a place and it starts to get warmer um, than usual, then that can cause heat stress for certain people. Um, and it can affect different communities and different people in different ways. So there's different impacts of climate change and not, not every place will have the same type of impacts, but these are some of the common things that we're starting to see um, with these changes in climate. In climate. Uh, next slide, please. So how can we help? And just to add a little context, so we were just talking about the impacts of climate change, but how can we not make the impacts be so extreme, right? So there's different things that we can do to help. We, as in us, and then businesses, communities, um, there's different things we can do. We can um, use public transportation or walk or ride a bike um, because certain things like cars or airplanes can release these really bad emissions into the atmosphere and that can cause you know, our atmosphere and our climate to change. So doing things that are gonna be better for our environment, basically. Um, we can increase green spaces, we can plant trees. And so that's something that we're gonna talk about today about how tree planting um, is beneficial and how helpful it is to um, fight climate change, essentially. We can go next. So what is Girl Scouts doing to address climate change? Well, in 2021, we promised to plant 5 million trees as a nature-based solution. Since then, we quickly saw that Girl Scouts are doing so much more than planting trees, and we needed a way to capture everything that Girl Scouts are doing to make a difference. Um, for example, we know that Girl Scouts like you are speaking out, they're taking action in support of the environment, you're mobilizing friends and families, and you're participating in citizen science. So now we're pledging 5 million overall actions to help eliminate carbon emissions, create habitats for wildlife, and safeguard existing trees. And there are so many ways that you can join us and Girl Scouts all over. For example, you can protect and honor trees now. You can earn related badges and journey awards. You can participate in Girl Scouts climate and outdoor challenges. You can even go to an event to learn more, or you can take action to address climate change with one of our highest awards. Together, all these small actions, they come together and they create larger, more lasting change. Next slide, please. And what's also really cool is that now you can do even more citizen science to help reach the goal of 5 million actions. So Girl Scouts has three programs that use SciStarter. Um, first, there's the Girl Scout Tree Promise, which is why we're all here, here today. So we'll hear more about this in a little bit. Um, next, whether you're a Girl Scout or a friend, um, you can also participate in the Girl Scout Climate Challenge. Um, the Climate Challenge asks you to get outdoors to learn more about climate science, connect with your community, and spread awareness about the issue. It pulls from all different types of Girl Scout programs and connects climate with other areas like math and nature and outdoor adventures. And it also includes a special set of climate-focused citizen science projects on SciStarter. Finally, there's the Think Like a Citizen Scientist journey, which is only available to Girl Scouts and volunteers. On this journey, you explore how scientists solve problems and you help scientists do their own research through SciStarter. You'll then use all you've learned to take action and make a difference in your community. Next slide, please. And now before I hand it back to Zainab to tell us more about trees, I wanted to take a minute and celebrate all the actions we've taken so far. Um, to date, we're estimating planting over 100,000 trees and taking on over 700,000 other actions, which totals more than 800,000, 840,000 actions. Um, this means we're getting even closer to 1 million, but we still need help getting there and to 5 million. Um, so we hope today is just your first step and you'll continue to take action with us. And so now I'm going to hand it back over to Zaina to talk about trees and tell us what they have to do with climate change. So thank you for that, Kaylee. Um, yeah, so let's learn a little bit more about trees. Uh, we can move to the next slide, please. So the power of one tree. Trees are incredibly powerful tools um, to fight against climate change. They absorb carbon dioxide and emissions from the atmosphere and they store it in their leaves and their branches and their roots. And they basically give us clean oxygen. Um, but the power of trees goes beyond just fighting climate change. They also provide us with shade, which can help cool our homes and cool our outdoor areas. Um, and it can help with reducing the need for air conditioning, for example. It provides habitats for wildlife, so for different animals, birds, squirrels. Um, it can help absorb heat to help, help it 
get a little cooler. Um, it also provides jobs because someone has to take care of the trees, right? So planting trees, creating, um, protecting trees, etc. Um, it can create jobs and it can shape the streets. Um, so here is a really cool image of the power of just one tree. So next time you see a tree, remember the power and the important role that it plays um, just overall, but also in our fight against climate change and in making our world a better place. Next slide, please. So I wanna do this really cool activity where we imagine a day without trees. So let's take a moment and imagine a world with no trees um, could y'all throw in the chat maybe, what do you think this would have on our environment and our daily lives? If you think about what I just spoke about a few minutes ago about how trees help keep the place cool, how it can have um, its habitat for animals, uh, what, what do you think would happen if we had a world with no trees? Someone said it would be really hot, no oxygen, uh, we probably would not be alive. Um, yeah, so we do need trees to breathe, no fruit. That's a really good one. Um, trees provide, you know, fruit and nuts. So that, that's really beneficial. Um, so yeah, once we're thinking about imagining a world with no trees, someone just mentioned food. So think about your chocolate or if you like uh, making lemonade out of lemons or eating apples. If we didn't have trees, we wouldn't have that. You wouldn't have maple syrup, you, your pancakes, you wouldn't be able to make tea or coffee, for example. So these are really important things to us. Um, also, they provide us with oxygen. We need oxygen to breathe, um, stay alive. And so trees are really, really important, um, especially also for wildlife. They need a place to live. Um, it can be a safe space for certain animals to live like higher up above in the trees. So trees play a really, 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 really important role um, just for us humans, not just for us humans, but for animals and just for society as a whole. Next slide, please. So what if there aren't enough trees? We've just, um, a bunch of y'all have shared different examples of what would happen if there was a world with no trees, but what would happen if there weren't enough trees? Um, essentially, if there aren't enough trees, our planet would face a big variety of problems. Um, trees, like we just pointed out, are really important. They play a major part in our environment. They produce oxygen. They absorb all the emissions in the carbon dioxide. They provide habitats for wildlife, provide us with food. And so without enough trees, essentially, our air quality would go down. Um, we wouldn't have as clean oxygen in the air. It could lead to health problems for humans, for animals. Um, it can cause different issues. So for example, trees also help with um, absorbing water. Um, so they help with floods and landslides. So if there aren't enough trees, we're gonna start seeing a whole bunch of different problems. Um, and we're gonna have to fight a bigger fight than just climate change. It would lead to so many different other things. Next slide, please. So I've got one last thing, and this is a tree trivia. So in the chat, I want you all to guess how many species of trees there are in the world. And just for a hint, it's a really big number. How many species of trees do you think there are? Okay, so I'm seeing 100,000. Ooh, big numbers, very specific numbers, 453, 1,293. Um, okay, yeah, 52,000, 12,000. So these are, these are big numbers. These are really big numbers. Um, keep going. I know we have a bunch of people on here. 73,000. So I think someone guessed the right one. So the answer is 73,000 species of trees. Um, it's a lot of trees, tons of trees, and I'm sure there's still trees out there that they have to discover. So yeah, that's all I've got. Thanks so much, Zainab. She's really our resident climate expert. So thank you so much. Um, so now I'm here to tell you a little bit more about the Girl Scout Tree Promise. Again, why we're here all today. Um, so launched in 2021, the Girl Scout Tree Promise is Girl Scouts tree planting and conservation initiative to plant trees, protect newly planted trees and existing tree cover, engage with citizen science projects, and honor trees on camp properties and in local communities. It asks not only Girl Scouts, but also friends, families, and partners of Girl Scouts to participate. So to complete the tree promise, there's two things you have to do. You either have to take the promise, 
Well, you have to take the promise and then you have to either plant, protect, or honor a tree. So today we're going to be doing both of these things and we're going to be honoring a tree through IC Change, um, so the citizen science project you'll hear about in a little bit. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned earlier, we're so proud of everyone that's already helped to plant over 100,000 trees. Now, planting trees may seem like a little thing, but it really can have a huge impact, like Zainab was saying. And it's a really powerful thing that anyone can do to cut combat climate change. Um, so if you haven't planted a tree yet, there's still a tons of different ways you can do that. For example, you can attend an event or you can even host your own. You could also raise money to sponsor trees through an organization. Next slide, please. Next, you can protect trees as part of the tree promise. Um, trees, they're in danger all over the world. Things like drought, erosion, erosion, um, harvesting for fuel and logging are just a few examples of the different threats that trees are facing. Um, and trees really need, they, they need protection to thrive. If they're threatened, they can't just move somewhere else. So protecting these existing trees and trees that have just been planted um, from things like invasive species, illness, habitat loss, or destruction it is essential in, to, in their ab ability to combat climate change. So now you can learn more about protecting trees and you can work to protect trees in your community, at camp, or globally. So one of the ways you can do this is with SciStarter um, by collecting data for any of three citizen science projects, including TreeSnap, iNaturalist, and Nature's Notebook. Um, you can also protect trees by partnering with a local organization to help remove invasive species. You might identify local policies or laws in your community and connect with the elected officials. You might even connect with local or even global community groups and organizations that are already working on tree protection and see how you can help support their work. Um, next slide, please. Finally, you can honor trees, which is what we're doing today. Um, honoring trees, it's really a great way to raise awareness about the important role trees play in our environment, our communities, and our history. By learning about and honoring trees, you're really creating a relationship with them. By raising awareness, you're also protecting trees because you're helping encourage others to protect trees too. Um, so one of the ways you can honor trees is with SciStarter by, again, collecting data for one of three projects, including IC Change, um, as well as Globe Observer, Trees, and Bud Burst. Um, I'm so excited because right after this, you're going to hear more about IC Change and we're going to jump right into it. Um, but some other ways, if you want to dig even deeper and honor more trees, um, is for example, you can identify trees, you can learn about and share their history, you can write poetry, um, you can do some tree math and do things like um, figure out how old they are. You can learn, um, you can also honor big trees or you can learn about their role across cultures. Next slide, please. So now that you know the important role of trees and how you can help with the tree promise, um, let's take the tree promise together. If you can, read along on the screen and repeat the words after me. I'm going to say it slowly. Um, so are you ready? We're going to take the tree promise together. All right. I promise to be a friend to every tree, just like they're a friend to me. I will plant and protect them through and through with the help of my loyal Girl Scout crew. Besides being beautiful, there's more to see or climate change, they hold a key. They fill our lungs with clim cleaner air. It's our responsibility to care. That's why I'll advocate for every tree because I need them and they need me. Yay. All right. Um, great job. And you're one step closer now to earning the tree promise patch. Um, so next slide, please. And finally, um, after this event, when we've done all the all of the activity, you can purchase the Tree Promise patch at the Girl Scout shop. Um, I will also drop the link for both the Tree Promise page on girlscouts.org, as well as the shop page in the chat. So you have those right and ready for right after the event. And now I think I'm hand handing it back over to Emma and Caroline to tell us more about IC Change. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much for all that information. That was super, super excellent. Good way to um, show off how many other ways there are, are to continue this practice too of honoring trees, protecting trees and everything. So we hope that you uh, continue all these things. Uh, so we're going to talk about IC change and actually guide you through the process of doing an observation. So just to give you a good background on what is happening in observation, this screen shows you the three different very specific steps. <laughs> um, for one, you create an account on IC change to be able to submit observations. 
And then on the second little area right here, the second picture, this is posting what you see. So we're going to go through, that's what we'll spend the most time on is we're going to show you what questions are going to be asked so you're prepared. Um, you also received a worksheet version of this about 30 minutes before the event so that you could um, work on it later or print for a later observation um, or look at that right now if, you, uh, if you'd like to and write down what you observed uh, most recently um, and plan to take a picture of or maybe you already took a picture. Um, the third thing is on IC Change, you can actually learn from others. And so when you go on to IC Change after having an observation, you'll notice that you can see all the other observations that exist and actually can relate to the things you're seeing or you can see what's happening across the world. Um, so with that in mind, uh, we'll go ahead and get you started. So the first thing you would do to make sure that you can get um, get credit for this contribution is you would go to scistar.org slash IC Change to see uh, the actual event. Um, or the project, excuse me. If you have a SciStarter account, by using the same email address that you use for SciStarter and using it on your IC Change account, um, so I'm going to go back a slide really fast. Back. Um, when you sign up for IC Change, if you use the same uh, email, that'll track your contribution. So when you uh, send something into IC Change on your SciStarter account, you'll you'll see a oh one observation, and then every time you you observe, you'll get more and more observations that you can track over time. Um, that's optional, so you don't actually need to do that. But if you would like to, it's welcome. Um, you're welcome to do so, as long as those emails match. That's the key. Um, all right, so in practicing data collection, so either you're looking at a picture that you've already taken or you're thinking through like what you will take a picture of, um, the first step is always to take a picture so that you have something to describe. Um, maybe there's something going on in your neighborhood. Maybe you have a lot of rain happening. Um, maybe you have an older photo. You can always um, backdate, as in you can write a date for your observation that's not today. It could be from the past. Um, you could report uh, flooding. You could take a picture of a tree and what that looks like. Maybe it's dried out. Um, I live in Arizona, and so a lot of the trees near me are pretty dried out right now. Um, we have stories about waiting for the bus in the hot sun. It was 95 degrees in Arizona today in Phoenix, so that would be a very valid um, observation that I would put down. And then mosquito bites are also important. Uh, so any type of um, unusual thing especially is is a great observation or any change or tracking weather over time. Awesome. I'm seeing some responses in the chat. I actually would love to hear your stories on what you're observing today, but um, I'm going to wait for that in a second here and for right now, actually. So the second step after you've taken a picture of something that's happening is you're actually going to write a story about it. You're going to essentially talk about what you're seeing. So you're going to describe what you saw. I have an example down here of someone who wrote a pretty short message of it's flooding again in April. It's the streets starting to flood. Thank you, City of Miami, for the water pump. So people coming to address the issue. If you noticed in the previous screen, excuse me, um, that uh, that car over there is possibly removing the flooding. That might be the Miami water pump. I'm not positive. It's pretty far away. But um, the point is, is that they're observing something and someone doing something about it, which is a pretty exciting thing. Um, so now that you know about what observations might look like, I'd like to know if you were practicing, this is your practice round, <laughs> um, if you were sharing an observation about something that happened today or in the recent past, um, can you describe something that happened um, near you, an observation you made? So if I were writing mine, I would say something like, well, still very sunny out because it's four, what time is it? It's five o'clock in Phoenix. So I would probably write, it's 95 degrees. <laughs> it's really hot in Phoenix already. And I would make a note at how hot it is, what the temperature is, and um, the humidity even, if I have access to that information, or like on a phone, you have the weather app, and they can tell you the, uh, the humidity level. So any type of information like that that might be useful or why it matters to you. Like maybe I had to walk a lot today, and that means I had to walk a lot in really hot weather when it's only April. So that's pretty, that's not super fun. Um, Caroline, you gave us a great one. I'm going to go ahead and read that. It was overcast day and cooler than normal for New Orleans this time of year. Okay. Yeah, good to know. <laughs> um, Jan, I'm assuming you're referring to overcast today. Yeah. Uh, there are figs on our fig tree. Yeah, explaining what's happening with your plants too, like if they're blooming early or something. Um, that is really good to know. Um, Alyssa, you mentioned it's cold. Yeah, is it unnormally or like abnormally cold? More information about that would be amazing. And I see some people adding in what time it is for them. <laughs> I'm glad. 
Um, I took a picture of my tree that looks like the one from The Lion King. Awesome. If you can describe what it looks like or how tall it is, or maybe actually we can move on with that transition because that's super helpful. Um, when you look at it on the app, by the way, or when you submit an observation for, for real, it'll look like this. So you'll have a, what did you see after submitting a picture? Oops. Okay, went back. Um, and you'll write in the description as well as writing whether or not it's unusual. So if it's yes, unusual, or maybe no, maybe it's pretty normal and you just want to note that it seems more normal than you would expect, um, that is a great thing to add as well. And then after sending or after writing out your description, you can also, you will also answer some questions. So part of it is knowing what day you saw this. So you can get that from your picture from when it's time stamped, um, or maybe you remember exactly when it was, or it's from that day. So it's easy to post, or it's like an immediate post. Um, time of sighting, it might be immediate because you're doing it right then and there, but just make sure to take the time that you do the, um, the, the sighting. And then the location, it's important that it's specific so we know exactly where in the world this is happening. Um, so just be aware of where you are in the world. If you're like outside your home, I would be wary of using your, your actual um, address or anything, but maybe like just really nearby. So make your, make your observation a block away or whatnot, and just make sure you're being uh, responsible with the information you give out. But um, that said, being as exact as possible is super, super helpful. Um, it looks like there's some more observations in the chat. I just want to check those out. There was a mini flood. Oh my gosh, up to your ankle. Yeah. In uh, Florida, there was some crazy flooding last week too, which, which was pretty awful. So yeah, if you're experiencing that, that's worth mentioning, right? That's worth bringing up. Um, in addition to those basics, you'll also be adding in information about if it has any relation to any of these topics. So if it has to do with animals or insects, like a mosquito bite, land and soil, maybe you're dealing with soil erosion, like uh, if you're in California or on a coastline where um, the side of the of a cliff face is kind of eroding down, uh, plants and trees. So if you're honoring a tree, um, note that anything with these asterisks, little stars, those are essentially little markers for things that require a little bit more information or at least ask for more information. So for example, if you add something about trees and you mark trees here, you'll be asked to do things like find the circumference of the tree. So there might be more information that you can provide that'll make your observation even better. Um, and I believe all of it is optional depending on what you have resource wise. Yeah, Caroline is saying yes. <laughs> so yeah, it's all optional. So if you do run into an issue where you're like, oh shoot, I don't know, um, then that's okay. Uh, but now you know that in the future, if you do submit something, you might be asked to find more information as well. Raining with thunder. I'm so distracted by all of your commentary. Oh no, shoes were destroyed. Some things are blooming early. Yeah, okay. It sounds like y'all have a lot to talk about on IC Change. So I'm excited for you to be here. Uh, if you're on the app, so if you're doing it automatically just through an app, it'll look like this. So on the left-hand side, we see the area to put the date and the time and the location. And then on the right-hand side, we see the suggestions for what your observation is about. And they actually make suggestions. So they make guesses as to what it's referring to. And you can just uncheck them if they're not accurate um, or check more if it, uh, if it is accurate. So this one's marked as storms and flooding. So I saw about the uh, shoes issue and with raining and storming. So you can add in that information there too. That's where you'll add it. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Caroline to talk a little bit more about what this means once you do the observations and why it's important. Thanks, Emma. Um, and I realized I actually built some little animations in, so I can just give you like a little thumb if that works for you. <laughs> so I'm hit the, so <laughs> the also, I'll flag uh, something's going on with my Wi Fi. So if you guys see my video just like freeze and I'm doing the robot, you can definitely let me know, but just that'll be what's going on there. Um, yeah, thank you guys for having me. I love all of your post ideas in the chat. These are actually all really great observations and you're getting really to the core of what we're trying to do at IC Change. Um, so as Emma just described, IC Change is, it functions a lot like social media. So if you think about Instagram, if you use Instagram or if you're, your mom or your brother or your sister uses Instagram, people might post their dogs, people might post, you know, going to dinner with their friends. On TikTok, you're posting like dances or your tutorials, whatever you like to do. I see change is where you're going to come to post what's going on around you in your environment. So it's a space that we've created to help bring experts on local environmental issues. So that's you guys. That's people who know their, their yard, their block, their neighborhood better than anyone else together with people who are bringing solutions. So these are solution designers, um, such as engineers and scientists 
Um, and then we have cities or utilities, state governments, federal governments, and all of these people are coming into a space to use your observations to inform uh, really powerful climate solutions. You can go to the next slide. Great. Um, so I know today we're talking about trees. And as was mentioned earlier, trees obviously uh, intersect with a lot of other topics. So it's not just, you know, what's your favorite tree in your backyard, but this is going to be something that you can really tie into a lot of other meaningful um, issues related to that. So we can just roll through these. Perfect. Um, when you're posting about trees, you can talk about how seasons are changing. I already saw a few people talking about early blooms. You can talk about wildlife. So what uh, species are living in your trees, flooding, as we mentioned. So trees actually help prevent flooding. Their uh, canopy prevents water from getting on the streets. Urban heat is critical. Um, that's something we do a lot on IC change. So where do you feel it's hottest in your city? Where do you need more trees planted? Um, and Planting and stewardship will be a big one. So those extra options that Emma described, you'll be able to actually say what species of tree that you're, you've observed. You can say whether you've planted a tree, whether you you know a tree needs maintenance or it needs watering, or you were the one who actually did those actions. And you can keep track of all of the, the great work that you're doing um, in the field with trees. And that last one there, yeah, drought and wildfires. These are actually just a few things that you can use to use IC change to talk about related to trees. It can really touch on anything. Um, I know today I'm thinking about how trees impact allergies because I don't know about anyone else, but like my sinuses have just been rock solid for maybe two months. So, you know, think creatively about how you're seeing trees in your environment, you know, where, where they're connecting to other parts of your life. And any of this can be a story on IC change that can be uh, useful in understanding what communities need and what solutions are, are needed most. We can go to the next slide. Here's a post. Um, I like this one a lot because it's really getting into that tracking change over time. I know one of the things um, we wanna focus on is how trees change. Um, and this user, her name is Judy. She's awesome. She's thinking all the way back. She's been obviously paying attention to trees for a long time. She's been teaching in the 70s, and she was seeing that there's uh, trends in the trees around her. So she would always say, I know it's the end of the school year is getting close because magnolias will bloom in late April, and then the dogwoods would come in around early or mid-May. But this year, she was seeing that the magnolias were already full bloom early April. Um, she also noticed there weren't any pollinators. These things don't always seem um, as dramatic as you know on this post, but it's actually really critical. And all these little details of when things change, like whomever mentioned earlier that the, the peach tree was blooming. Um, this is from a scientific point of view, back to that citizen science component. This is really uh, important information. And we're creating a community record together so that we can know when things are working as they should, when pollinators are out, when trees are blooming, and when things might be off and how that relates to climate change. Let me go to the next slide. Um, one challenge we like to do, um, I know I do this and a lot of our community does this, is you can adopt a tree. Um, kind of like, you know, if you ever probably didn't adopt a highway, but it's a similar philosophy where you're basically picking out a tree or a patch of trees um, and you're saying, you know, I'm going to watch this. Just, you know, it doesn't need to be every day. It can be once every few weeks, once every few months, but just, you know, take a photo and write down what you see about it. Um, and if you'll click that animation, you can see how this person has uh, watched the spot and they're actually tracking this spot every few months. And it's helping us and scientists understand um, where, or excuse me, how seasons are coming in, when drought is impacting the area, what does that look like, how seasons are changing. Um, and a photo really can tell, tell you a lot. So, um, you know, if each of you did that, that, that could really build a lot of knowledge and um, help us understand more about how your, your environment and your local area is experiencing both weather and climate trends. Um, so we'd love it if you joined us in that, and um, I'll throw it back to Emma or whomever else is presenting next.
Yeah, we're just about at the tail end. So I just wanted to um, pause us here. Uh, if we have any questions about how to participate, uh, we'd love to hear them. I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds while I yammer on about something. Um, I am very glad that we had so many things to uh, share about IC Change. So thank you for uh, sharing all those things, Caroline. Um, it is truly one of my favorite projects to participate in. It's really, really simple to do so. So I really hope all of you are um, motivated to, to go ahead and do that uh, whenever it's daylight for you. I know a lot of you are it's nighttime. So when it's daylight, taking a picture of something or participating in the adopting a tree um, will be even easier. All right. If we have any questions, you can drop them in the QA, Q and A and also in the chat. I'm just taking a look at all the chats to make sure we didn't miss any. Grab trees, cutting down trees. Hmm, doesn't look like we have any questions on here. All right, well, if that is uh, the case. The, sorry, the one I will say to, uh, I don't know if that's Jana, I hope I'm not uh, mispronouncing that, is that anyone can do it. It's free. Um, so yes, please, please jump in there. Is that for adopting a tree? I. I couldn't tell if it was adopting a tree or just icy change in general, but both are free. So. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> yes, both are definitely free. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, in that case, it looks like we don't have any extra um, extra notes in the chat, so I'm going to keep us moving then. Um, if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to SciStarter or to the Girl Scout uh, groups or the icy change um, uh, helpers. Um, either, actually, um, Kaylee and Caroline, if you'd like to drop the um, reaching out uh, either link or email, like the person who you would contact. I'll actually, I'll add it into our our group chat or not group chat, our follow-up email, excuse me. Um, awesome, yes, thank you, Kaylee. How do you adopt a tree? Uh, Magdalena is asking if, uh, Caroline, do you wanna give a, uh, a description of like the process? Is it just the taking picture? So it's like you are like, you just choose a tree? <laughs> right, it's a, it's a very, um self-managed process. So you follow Emma's steps of signing up and creating an account, and then you choose your tree and you can write that in your post. You can say, hey, this is my tree. I'm going to track it over time. Um, and we'll be in there commenting and asking you about it too, because um, we are curious. So um, yeah, you just let us know how which tree you're interested in, and uh, we'll track that with you. And we'll be excited to see how it changes over time. Awesome. Yeah, totally free process. Unlike adopting a freeway and funding its maintenance. <laughs> Don't have to worry about any of those things. Awesome. All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this out then. Um, so I'm excited that that'll be, um, uh, it looks like all of you are very excited. Oh, wait, we have a daughter just planted a Texas laurel, Lauren tree today, which we did get from a seed. Excited to watch it grow and plant in our backyard. <gasps> I think that might be your adopted tree then. You might have to take pictures every year and every season to see how it goes. That's awesome. Okay, great. Um, okay, so just to uh, close this out, it is Susan Science Month and that's part of the reason why we're meeting today. Um, there will be future events for Girl Scouts. So we look forward to having you back for those. Uh, but since you're here, uh, Citizen Science Month is our, our excuse to really just do all the citizen science in the world. And so if you feel like you learned a lot about citizen science, we would really appreciate your help in answering the survey. If you are a child, please ask your family to help you out with this and, uh, and fill in the answers for you. It's all about just um, essentially, did you learn? Uh, what did you learn? How to go? And then um, that's about it. So any, any and all those questions that you can answer on there would be incredibly helpful to us to understand how to better, better help you for next year in April. Um, awesome. I'm loving the added stories of trees and planting them in the chat. Um, lastly, we have a million one resources for you. So we'd love to keep helping you as you go on your journey of being a citizen scientist, whether or not that be the actual journey that Kaylee mentioned earlier, or just your general being a part of citizen science. Um, so you are more than welcome to contact us at info at SciStarter.org. You can also ask questions through SciStarter of the project leaders. So on the IC change site. You can actually ask questions of the project leaders. You can take trainings. We have a podcast. We meet every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern to have conversations like these with projects, um, and we'd love to have you there, although I'm assuming many of you are still in school. But once you're out of school, if you're in the summertime and want to do those events, we'll be here for you. Um, and if you want more projects, uh, we have that little link for the Girl Scouts specifically, but you have a database full of projects, so we'd love to have you um, working on more of these projects. Awesome. All right. I think that 
closes us out. I don't think we have anything else. Um, and we ended a bit early, which is awesome. So I'm going to give you back about 12 minutes of your time. This is your last call for any questions, if anyone has any. Otherwise, we'll see. Uh, good luck on your tree promise. I Thanks, see. everyone. Thanks, everyone. Oh, and Thank bye, you, Facebook. <laughs> or I'll double check to make sure Facebook isn't asking questions. <laughs> Okay, good. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop our recording then and take us off of Facebook. Bye bye.